Sign this conference will now be recorded. If everyone will please mute themselves until they're ready to speak, that will ensure good quality. Um, and use the mute unmute button or star six if you're on the phone. Okay, so the meeting is started. Jenny, do you want to read the? Sure. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Brooks Free Library Board of Trustees is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance by members of the public will be permitted, but every effort has been made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. Members of the public who would like to join the meeting live may do so by using the link or the phone number provided in the agenda. The meeting will also be shown on Channel 18 and on Channel 18's uh, YouTube channel. All set. Okay. Uh, well, call to order. I'm Joanne Brown. I'll be running the meeting. We'll start with a roll call. Linda Sabula. I see Linda Sabula's there. Here. Yeah. Bill, Bill Kroll. Thanks. Hi, Brian. Hello, everyone. My apologies for the technical difficulty. Start not. Okay. <laughs> I see Bill's here. Um, Joan McCarty. She, she's here. The mouth here. Uh, Kathleen Remillard. Here. Bernadette Wasek. Here. here. And Wheeler. Here. Also attending is Library Director Ginny Hewitt. Here. Um, Assistant Director Emily Milan and Administrative Assistant Megan Green. Here. Is our is our liaison from the Board of Selectmen here? No, I don't see him. And tonight we also have Barbara Howard from Rockland Trust and Brian Capow from, from Rockland Trust. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go to the report from the Rockland Trust people. Okay, this is Barbara, and I will um, start. Does everyone have the package that we sent out to you all? Yes. Okay, excellent. I'm going to refer to you to page two. I'm just going to quickly review the agenda. I'm going to do an administrative review. Then we'll look at the allocation, uh, the mass legalist characteristics, which is what the funds are in invested in, the performance, portfolio um, holdings, and then Brian will also do a market commentary. Okay. Can I just ask how much time, how much time you've allotted to us? We haven't allotted a specific amount of time, but. Okay, so if we, if we keep it to like 15, 20 minutes, will that be good? Yes. No okay, more. I wanted, to, I wanted to take everyone to fall asleep with someone rambling on. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we'll just turn our, our microphones off. <laughs> wait, wait before you nod off and I'll try to figure it out. Okay. All right, so the um, the next section there is just the account information. Um, so the account was opened in October of 2015. The investment objective is balanced, and again, Brian will review that um, with the allocation. And then the signers are um, Amy and Nancy from the town. Mm -hmm. So that is it for my section of the report. So I'm going to turn it over to Brian. And Brian, remember, you have 15 minutes. All right. So uh, we'll, I'll try, what I'll try to do is I'll, I'll um, rather than go diving into everything, which I'm always happy to do, but it certainly takes more than 15 minutes. I'll try to hit some high points. And then what I'd like to do is get what's most important to you as far as questions, comments, what concerns you about the markets rather than. So really, even before I go into the market commentary, um, I'd like to hear what, what what's maybe concerns the group. Um, so, so real quick on page three, the portfolio is what we would call a balanced portfolio. So kind of that, you know, right now it's that 60-40 split. Tends to be more 55-45 um, is how we run it. 
And now it's 60 because we took advantage of the lows of the market in March. So to take you back real quick, I, mean, I said I wasn't on the market yet, but um, when we look at the allocation, we usually keep it at that 55, 45. March happened, and rather than circle our wagons, what we did real quick is we looked at all the investments in the portfolio, made sure that we, uh, we took it was all hands on deck, everyone in the investment management team, made sure all the portfolios we hold, that the assets that we hold, what we uh, there would be uh, ongoing entities on the other end. So making sure essentially what we called um, investment triage, making sure that everything was going to be a, a going on concern and, and a strong company or a strong holding in the, in the case of debt. Um, then we looked for any opportunities we could make within the portfolio. Could we trade out stronger things for weaker items? And, then, and also what we can take care of any dislocation that we could see in the marketplace, meaning when things trade out of order, not on fundamentals, but more on market technicals. And so we reviewed the portfolio in, in that regard as well. Um, and then what we ended up doing, uh, essentially lastly, or at the same time really, but is rebalance the portfolio. When the stock market goes down 30% in such a short time frame, we want to make sure we go back to what we want that allocation to be through thick and thin or through, the, through time. So we made sure we had enough equity. Um, certainly if it went from down 30 to down 50, people would be like, oh, what are you doing that for? But we wanted to make sure, again, we hold the, the town holds us to a, a, um, a um, an investment policy that we want to make sure we can continue and that we're in compliance with. So that's what we did. The market came coming back, then we're able to take a essentially advantage of that and make sure that the portfolio grows as opposed to you know if you do that 50 50 split and hard in the hands of the picture but and something goes down and comes back up you get to the same spot if it comes down and then you sell a little of this to make them back even and then this jumps up now the portfolio is in, in a you end up in a, a better position than if you just stayed still so we don't like to sit in our uh, laurels uh, and we don't like to just circle the wagons when things are really good or really bad. We want to make sure we know what's going on uh, and we're treating the portfolio as such. So balanced portfolio, we kept it put down throughout this. We didn't go to cash and we didn't go to all stock. So I just want to refresh real quick on page four because people could be looking at this portfolio and at times say, well, it's doing a lot better than the S&P or it's doing more poorly than the S&P. Um, I will say bond market and stock market, it's different than either. Uh, the town, when, when it's trust funds, um, at this point was, is allowed to invest in the Massachusetts legal list of investments. It's a list that they created essentially for the division of banks uh, several decades ago to keep them, you know, you go back to a while when banks were buying like at work, et cetera, and getting a little um, fancy free with their investments or getting a, uh, uh, outside the ropes, if you excuse me, you know, call it whatever you want to call it, the ropes outside the reservation, but certainly they went outside of what their strengths were. So they tried to reel them back in, and the Department of Revenue said, well, they, the, the banks have a list. Why don't we put municipalities on a similar list, or on the list, rather than creating our own? So they did so. So what's on this list? They can buy U.S. Treasuries and government securities. They can buy municipals. But most of the time, since you're not taxable, um, municipals don't make as much sense. There are times when they, they can, but certainly um, so we can buy governments, we can buy municipalities, um, we can buy what they call supranationals, essentially uh, international bank of development, et cetera, that, that help countries um, uh, that, that are debt laden or certainly emerging markets more as a government to uh, support them, if you will. Um, and we can buy a, a confined list of corporate bonds, essentially probably about 50 names. Most of them, if we, when we look at the list, are um, utility companies that have been rolled up, uh, or the other side, the bank, the, the all the um, baby bells as they continue to get rolled up. You know, when they broke 18, so they had a whole bunch of different telecoms, but the, the, the list in general on the corporate side is um, seems to be railroads, um, telecoms, and uh, utilities for the most part. And um, so as those names have continued to roll up, there's, there's fewer and fewer. Uh, they're strong names for the most part. They tend to be more in the triple B rating, which sometimes makes people uneasy, but they're, they're triple, e, triple B sectors as opposed to just companies that, that are more risky. But there are certainly 
within the telecom space, you have to be very careful that those AT&T or Verizon wirelines are going to get sold off, sold off to essentially a junk bond company or held. So we do a lot of research with the with the corporates on this list to make sure it's not just we don't just treat it like oh it's illegal let's just throw the money at it because it's not that at all you want to do your research throughout on the equity side if you think about kind of going against the s p 500 the legal list now has 22 names it can invest in but certainly not the same breadth of market um and of that the defensive nature of the mark of the portfolio uh of this list ends up being almost uh, about 70 percent of the portfolio is in more defensive names that helps when things go bump in the night, like in March, because essentially about 35 or 32 percent of the portion of about almost 35 now are consumer staples, or seven out of the out of the 22 names. Um, those are essentially Coca-Cola, Procter and Gamble, things that we use through thick and thin, but you know not necessarily the same like glossy um, growth company. On the healthcare side. Uh, same thing, six names are almost 27% uh, 20, of the portfolio of, of the uh, list as well. And so that's when you're doing high flying tech companies, it doesn't really help you. But certainly um, when things go, uh, I guess I said, you know, for lack of a, a bit of term, a bump in the night, um, people tend to still take the prescriptions and, and Advil's and, and, all, and all those type of things. So healthcare does pretty well through that time frame. The issues with, where you have issues, is the whole technology sector, which is, you know, depending on how you cut it, over 30% right now of, of the S&P 500, um, we only have HP on the list. Not exactly cutting edge technology, and that's the only option we have. And then on discretionary, um, on consumer discretionary, where you can, that's where a lot of your Amazons reside, et cetera, et cetera at certain points, um, there's only McDonald's. Not exactly the most, um, uh, it's more almost like a staple, really, but it's considered consumer discretionary for the list. There's no energy, which certainly helps through this time period, or or, or in 2020. There's no telecom, they can buy the debt, not the stock. No materials, and no reads. So it's a limited list. So when I see the returns, if I was to show you in March, you'd be clicking the heels, say, "Wow, bro, you did such a great job versus the market." And I show you when you start, you know, when you start comparing it versus Apple and Microsoft, and it's not nearly the same return. So. Overall, how is the trust fund done? I'm switching to page five. And you can see that over the last three months, it's achieved a return of 4.29. You see, can see where that came from as well. Uh, the bond returns have been very low over the last several months That's because interest rates already went down in that low interest rate environment. Uh, it just can't create a lot of yield for us. And you can see that stocks, you know, it still uh, continue to to flourish, if you will, um, the last several months. Legal has held up pretty well versus the S&P over that time frame, the 8.93, the S&P 500, and 6.78 for, for the more limited list. When you look at year to date, the, the legal has held up uh, very well, When again, when we're looking through, Mar through March and, and, and really the throes of it in the middle of March, it was a very good place to be in the legal list. It's come back so strong, and the way to think of the, how the way the S&P 500 came back, the top five companies, five companies in the S&P um, have been up over 25%, and the rest of the S&P has been up, has essentially been in negative territory. So it's really been heavy, um, the largest companies in the S&P doing the best. So you can see the differential, how the S&P through September um, is 5.5% or over that, and then slightly negative for the legal list side because um, toothpaste and, and Coca-Cola and, and, and burgers just aren't going to keep up with um, with Apple and, and, and Amazon and Netflix, et cetera, and Microsoft running as, as fast and as hard as they have. Through time, you can see, though, uh, the portfolio has done well at 7.21 uh, since our inception and just over 6.5 at 6.59 over the three years. Uh, the bonds have performed quite well, and again, the stocks have done well for what is on the list. Um, it, 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 uh, through, you know, if, if I looked at the last decade, it would be much closer than the S&P. The last five years, the S&P really, really ruled the roost, and it's been such a tech story of those largest names. Um, that's why you see that such a disparity. 
disparity or, or, or differential between the S&P 500 and common. But overall, it's, it ends up being a lower volatility or risk portfolio than the marketplace because it doesn't have those num those those securities that, that have or the sectors really that have the largest amount of volatility or movement uh, throughout this. Um, you know, in market, throughout the markets in general, really overweight consumer staples, healthcare, and some utilities that essentially um, stay a lot more steady when things usually go awry. So that's the performance. Before I go in and kind of market or, 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 or other items, questions, comments from the group? Or? All right. Okay, sure. Sure, Linda. I mean, when you get to the page that is page 12, I guess. Yep. Is there any possibility that we can get these on an annual basis, meaning 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019? One month doesn't tell me anything. So this schedule kind of lays out where money is coming and going. So it would be, is there a possibility of getting that so we could at least understand the history, or I could understand the history? and understand what we're earning versus what we're being charged. So is that a possibility? So this is Barbara. So you, what you would like is to see an annual report for all those years so that you show it shows the total of all the additions, fees, and everything each year. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. Yeah, so one that goes from whenever inception was to 1231.15, and then calendar 2016, calendar 2017, etc. So, so um, yeah, I, I can certainly do that. That will take me some time, but I can certainly do that. Yeah, and before before I do it, only because this sheet's manual. It's like this is a, a you know a spreadsheet she calculates for the for the um, library trust funds each time. Right, is it more of a return base? You're trying to see what the annual return is each year, and then net of fees. I would just like to see the information. Okay. So, yeah, no, I just, so I just, do you, does Rockland, rather than do it in this way, does Rockland's portfolio, is there a sheet on your standard portfolio reports that has the year-to-date information on it, strat, you know, structured out? Um, are, are the actual statements do, but it doesn't break it out by the funds because everything's I commingled. Think, that's so if you're fine, looking but as long as it's as long as it's our money, if it's the I don't need it done by fund, but if you have that, that will at least help me understand what the trans what what is happening in terms of overall. Okay, okay, yeah, I can I can get and who do, who should I send this to when I'm done? Should I send it to Megan? I I Jenny, is that acceptable? I see nods, so yeah. I guess it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can send. I can. I think I've gotten an email address from both Megan and you, so I'll send it to both. And then we can we'll forward it to everybody. Okay, perfect. Okay, that probably won't get out until sometime next, just to so that so I can. Um, I don't overpromise. That's fine. I wanted to ask: Did you just say that you couldn't separate it out because the funds from the town were commingled? If I if I did it if I did it um, on on our statements the statements for the for the full for the full portfolio everything is together. Um, so that so that means it's the just to be clear, the whole portfolio is going to have all the town funds, not ours. Um, no, I'm gonna not I'm gonna break ours. I'm, I, I'm going to break it down so it just shows the library funds. It may not show your individual funds, but it'll be just the library funds. Okay. Okay. I wanted to make sure that was clear. Yeah. Thanks for asking that, Joanne, because uh, that's what I was expecting, but that was a good question. Yep. No, it absolutely was. It'll be just the library fund. Yeah, and sorry I was off on that. I just didn't know because if, if it was just a full annual performance number, you know, what did the what did the fund achieve and then back out the you know the fee percentage wise. Um, that's an easier report 
that my group can do. Um, it'll just as, as I was so we can get the other one. It's just going to take a little while to amass all all the years. I think Linda, would you like to see that? Um, so not just what the funds are bringing in or the fees that are going out, but also in relation to what we spent. You, you want to see all the little pieces, right? Yep. Yeah, I think that's what you did. You're going to see the contributions I mean, and, or the withdrawals that are going out too. Yeah. Perfect. Yep, I can I can certainly do that. Any other questions, comments, or questions about the market? Anything else they're seeing? Questions why I have this crazy beard for the second time in my life? No. <laughs> I, I actually grew when when they got kicked out of school, and I started growing when they went back. I dropped my daughter off at college and started growing one, and and uh, I don't know where I'm going to go with it. But well, do, what else would you like to point out to us? Sure. So I was going to think if you go to the um, the last page, there's Carl Marx. It's real quick on page ten and eleven. Just because when you, when you take a snapshot of the economy, I won't, I won't go too deep into it, but and we can rather rehash everything that's happened. Uh, on page 10, one thing on the right hand, on the left hand side, I apologize. Um, when people say, well, this, you know, look where the economy is, look how many things aren't going on, um, how can the stock market be close to uh, where we started the year? Or, you know, depending on the day, sometimes being ahead or below, you know, this September was a bad month, but overall, how, how can we be there? And I almost want to say I'm you know, somewhat proud or, or, or um, was very happy to see what investors, the way they viewed the market this time, meaning so often anytime we're looking at uh, a, a, we're in a down period or we're you know, facing a recession, et cetera, you see the market drop and sometimes drops really precipitously. And with that, they, you know, sometimes people forget or just say, well, you know, things don't look good. Well, we have to remember that stock prices are really just the present value of future earnings. So when we look when we look at the stock market, it's it's really all right. If we're not going to get earnings, the stock market should be lower. So it started doing that when they didn't know what was going to happen. The government stepped in and they filled the you know kind of pockets of a lot of uh, people that, that were out there and needed funds and needed to connect uh, who was working, who wasn't, because the unemployment certainly went up so high. And then uh, the Fed stepped in and they essentially opened the markets. Anytime you hear the Fed say we're buying you know treasuries, we're buying governments buying high yield um, ETFs, et cetera, they're essentially saying that market is open for business and companies that need to access capital can. So he went through and said all the markets are open, you can raise money. And companies did. I mean, even companies, you think of like the Marriott's and Hilton's of the world, whose businesses were 90% closed from a revenue point of view, uh, could come to market. They tried to raise a billion dollars. They were able to raise more than they wanted at a lower coupon, a lower yield than they expected. And there was that they were essentially 10 times oversubscribed. I mean, there were 10 buyers for every one bond that was out there. And that's at a time when their revenue was only 10% of what they had. And that kind of positive, and that was the Fed saying, hey, we're here and we're going to be here until the, until we fix, until this gets fixed. Uh, so when you fast forward to <clears throat> how the market came back, you see the blue lines on that left side, the last three, you can see 2008. We're going to have lower earnings this year. We weren't to work all year through the year, so it's going to be lower. But the next two years, if we come online and business happens, then there's no reason why it's saying the market now is saying there's no reason why the market can't be this high if the expectations we have for corporations end up happening with those two blue lines. So those are what we watch as investors, uh, as analysts. If, if, if earnings are starting to, to deteriorate at all, well, then, then that's when the market can slip. If what we expect to happen happens, then we'll be all right. And I just wanted to show the next page on slide on slide 11. It, you know, there's a lot of little cuts and colors, but I'll go through it kind of uh, counterclockwise and fairly quick. Now, if you're either getting, and I was doing some remodeling from this, so if you're either in the trades or have been doing items like that, when we talk to some clients, they're like, wow, the economy's booming because I can't get workers, I can't get supplies, there's huge inflation on wood, et cetera. So those people are saying, all right, I get it. But for so many of the rest of us who say we don't see anyone boarding planes, we don't see them boarding trains, 
We don't see the same traffic going on. Um, we don't see people in restaurants the same, and we see a lot of these people laid off. How could this economy even be moving forward, similar to even how you're projecting on the page forward? And, and the way we're process here, because it doesn't make me feel good, is as much as the numbers versus the humanity side of it, because you would want everyone working, we want everyone to be in good stead. However, when you look at in this, this, this top left section, it essentially looks at those sectors, hotel, tourism, transportation, uh, essentially um, uh, restaurants, and then grocery, uh, essentially food other than um, groceries, et cetera. So when you take that part, uh, that's essentially 19% of the GDP, or the gross domestic product of the, of the U.S. So you say, well, you're taking 20% off, the market should be down a lot more. So you go to the next part and see how many people are working in these industries. And you take those same sectors, and it's about 20%. So it's 20% of jobs. So when we lost so many jobs out there, so many, many of them were from these sectors. Now, we're... Um, what happens with people and what happens with the economy uh, separate is those sectors together only equal about 7% of the operating company or essentially what goes to earnings for the S&P 500. So essentially the higher market businesses and the ones that um, keep the rest of the economy going, the industrials and the technology, et cetera, those, those items um, are still doing fine. And so therefore, they're essentially, that's why you can have strong earnings or, or somewhat stronger earnings than you would ever think that if you just walk the main street in any of our towns. So it doesn't doesn't make me any happier that more of those people are out of work, but on the margin basis of, of the, baby, the baseline economy or the backbone of the economy, it can still do well, though we struggle to keep some of these other ones afloat. So we'll still see potentially more um, money from the government still to come. Uh, the next CARES or whatever they want to name the next package will, but uh, those are to take care of the people that we see in the front here that aren't working, but the backbone economy is still moving forward, and that's that's kind of what we see. It. And, and it's a, a scary disconnect that's between the economy and, and then what we're seeing, but it, it is one that, that exists. So I don't know if that, that helped answer anything that you're seeing out there or caused more questions, but I'm certainly here for any all questions, concerns, or anything portfolio or otherwise. I'd like to poll the trustees to see if there are any questions out there. Um, I, I'd like to ask Linda first, uh, because she's in, in alphabetical order, but she's uh, obviously paying attention and is knowledgeable in this area. So Linda. Uh, until I have some information, Joanne, it's hard for me to have a question. Okay. So. A lot of this has been overview, which has been very interesting. Yes. Uh, but I'm, you know, you know, I'm a bean counter, so mm -hmm. I really look for information. So maybe I'll have some questions after I see some information. But thank okay. you. Okay. Well, then we'll talk about this next month too. Well, Bill, do you have anything you want to point um, ask right now? I don't have any questions. I want to thank. Um, Brian and Barbara for making the presentation and catching us up. There was a pause there during the surge of the pandemic when we weren't getting reports, but they, they've caught us up and uh, I appreciate the work that they're doing. And I appreciate Linda's expertise um, in the financial world that, that I don't have. I, I, whenever we have a discussion like this, then I realize as a lawyer, I have to speak every day, speak because otherwise it just is a foreign language. Um, so um, I'm, I'm glad that Linda has a handle on on some of this. Um, my overall perception is that um, you seem to be doing okay, and we're staying within our parameters, um, and Success, I think, is just in this world right now is just staying even mm -hmm. as much as possible. So those are my comments. Thank you. Joan, do you have a comment? I do not. Thank you very much for the presentation. Yes, thank well, you. 
Thank you. Kathleen? I don't have any questions, and um, I thank you, too, for the information. Uh, Bernadette, Bernadette, do you have anything to add? Okay. No. And Jeannie, do you? No, I just want to thank Brian and Barbara again, and I agree with Linda that we'll, we might have more uh, questions once we have more information. Thank you. Okay, that sounds great. Right, thank you, Barbara and Brian. Yes, and you are very welcome. Thank you, you for, all. For we are sorry that, you know, I, it's great to see everyone. If you've seen faces, because we just don't see that many these days, uh, okay. it's great to see everyone's face. And I am so sorry we're not doing it, you know, uh, in the library as we did last time. I uh, wanted to see everybody and, and get to chat with you guys because, you know, we see it from the other side, but it's always so good to sit with everyone, the, the caretakers of the library, you know, and, 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 and how the world should say the stewards of the money. And now you've been good stewards and continue. So we, we like to inter interact with what's how, how you're thinking, what you're trying to do with the funds. Um, and then also I like walking out of there and have a nice hot meal in, in Harwich uh, on a fall evening. So uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry for all those reasons I don't get to. So, but thank you for having us. Any questions, please follow up. And we're happy to answer them when we're not. Thank you. All right. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Everyone have a great night. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, next uh, item on the agenda is the approval of the meeting's minutes from the September meeting. They were included in your packet. Does anyone wish to make any corrections? I have one question, and that is, were you the, the, uh, at the end it says you were acting chair. Were you acting chair for this meeting? Joanne? Yes. yes, I was. Or were you real chair? I'm the real chair. And re last meeting, yes. You were the real chair? Yes. Okay. Uh, Emily. So that's on the last page where it has the adjournment for on the meeting where it has the adjournment. It shows uh, the acting chair adjourned the meeting, but she wasn't. Yes, Jenny. Just want to say, um, so Joan, you could just make the motion to approve the minutes, striking that word acting. Okay, and perfect. You don't have to bring it back next time. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to accept the meeting, accept the minutes, with oh. the deletion of the word acting in front of chair under item number 10, adjournment. Okay, second. Can I have a second. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, Linda? Aye. Bill? Aye, and I apologize for my absence at the beginning of the meeting. All of a sudden, my screen went all blue. It said your device is having an error, and it started making a loud, bu loud buzzing sound. <laughs> so it took me a while to recover and figure it out. <laughs> These are trying times. I think. Joan? Oh, you yes. You made yes, a motion. I'm in favor. I take a motion. Kathleen? Aye. Um, Bernadette? Aye. And Jeannie made the, Jeannie? Aye. And I vote aye also. Okay, moving down to next item, uh, public comment. Do we have anyone who has joined, joined us online or called in that would like to make a comment? Okay, I'm going to take that as a no. Um, then we're moving on to reports. I don't have a report this evening, but uh, Ginny's report was included in the packet. Does anyone have any questions or comments about it? No? Okay. Um, Ginny, do you have anything you want to add? Sure. A um, couple things. So now we've had, since I wrote the report, um, we've added, we've been open a few more days. Uh, we started the grab and go inside access on September 29th. We're open Tuesdays 10 to 2 and Thursdays 3 to 7. So we've had three days. It's been fairly consistent. We've had 85 to 100 people each day. Um, 
usually there's an initial rush of people lined up to come in. Um, but other than that, it's fairly steady. There's not been any congestion occurring. Um, the last hour on Thursday evening is much less foot traffic, but that's normal for evening hours. Um, mm -hmm. About half of the people stay five to 10 minutes and the other half stay about 10 to 20 and a very small minority of people say, stay the 30 minutes. Those tend to be the computer users. Um, so most of the time we have 10 to 12 people in the building. I think we may have had a high of 18 at one time which is well below our limit of 30 people at one time. So the turnover has been occurring naturally. People pick up some items and they leave. Um, we've had a greeter explaining the mass requirements, what's available and where things are and the expectations on the 30 minute time limit. And that's worked out really well. Um, everyone's, uh, almost everyone's arrived wearing a mask. We have given a few out to, to those who didn't have it, but you know, they took it and they didn't object to wearing one. Um, We've had to give a few reminders to people to to uh, have the mask cover their nose and mouth, but so far people have been cooperative and everyone was so happy talking about how just how happy they were to come back in. Um, many people are coming in to just pick up holds, which they could have done at curbside, but they really enjoy the chance to come in. They missed the library and it just makes life seem more normal again to come inside. Uh, one area of potential concern we have with is uh, the computer use. Uh, interest has been really high and um, many, well, we've probably had four to eight people each day. Uh, they have 30 minute sessions and, and a number of them have complained that they would like longer than 30 minutes, but we don't plan to extend, extend those sessions. And the reason is um, many of the people that are coming in now to use the computers aren't able to do so independently. And so the computer skills are not good and they're expecting and a couple have been somewhat demanding, wanting extended one-on-one -on -one help like we used to be able to provide. Mm -hmm. But that is not possible to provide that individual help to someone using a computer without having extended close contact. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So we've now marked out a six foot space around the public computer. So at least it's a visual cue for patrons when a staff member can stand there and say, I'm not allowed to come closer to that than this. And you know, I'm sorry that I'm not gonna be able to provide more assistance to you. Um, so I know Emily will add some more in a minute, but um, over the past month, a lot of our time has been spent preparing for opening for inside access. We've moved furniture and collections and uh, the DPW finished their project to retrofit the building just in time. Um, the three alcoves were enclosed and the plexiglass was installed. Um, the new alcoves really looked fantastic. Um, and uh, they took a lot of great care to make sure that all the details were right and the uh, doors and windows and walls look like they've always been there. So um, lots of thanks to them. Um, I personally spent a great deal of time this past month packing up 20 years worth of accumulated documents and <laughs> files and moving things. I probably weeded half of the files that I had time to review, but I probably only got a chance to look at a third of what I have. So more to come. I'm in my new space and it's great. And Emily's in her new space. Um, and, and so all of the library staff members spent a whole lot of time cleaning, organizing, and decluttering all the public spaces. We moved tables and chairs um, out of the, the public area. Uh, we moved some other bookcases so that we can have, could set up browsing collections for audiobooks and nonfiction DVDs and children's picture books in the main area of the first floor. And everything just looks nice and clean and well organized. It looks just like you would want it to, you know, like the experts say you should do. So people feel comfortable coming in during a pandemic. They, it looks like a well cared for, um, organized place, uh, nice mm -hmm. and clean. Uh, we have a new custodian. Um, the custodian uh, custodial pool assignments were shifted. And so we've had a new custodian for, I don't know, Oh, maybe almost two months. Anyway, she she's been a great help, and she's around when we're open, uh, when we're open to make sure that people are aware um, of the limitations of what they should, you know, needing to wear a mask and all. Um, and let's see, um, I have some. I provided some statistical data in the packet from the two state reports that were due 
this past month. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about that. Um, it, it's kind of interesting to look at. One is a historical look since the renovation in 98, um, which is kind of nice to see. But the other, um, I think it may be five or six pages, it shows um, the past few years. Um, so you, it's more of a breakdown. You can see like audio books, uh, print mm -hmm. materials, what's happening. And, and that's kind of interesting to look at as well. Uh, so just I w just wanted to mention uh, the budget. Um, the budget passed with no further cuts than what, um, after I recommended the August 5th cuts, um, the, no other reductions were made. Uh, so our final budget represented a 1% increase over fiscal 20, which is great. However, one challenge going forward is um, because the increase was so low, um, it'll it we will need we can't we can't sustain that for several years and meet the municipal appropriation requirement, which is the um, to meet that an appropriation for the libraries needs to be the average of the last three years appropriation plus two and a half percent. So it doesn't need to go up two and a half percent every year, but when you have a low year, um, you know it's more important the next year. So for next year to meet the um, MAR, our budget would need to increase 2.3 percent. And the concern is uh, we haven't received any uh, budget guidance yet from the town administrator or the selectmen, um, but obviously they're expecting it to be less than that. Um, I, I'm assuming that that 2.3 percent will be over what they would like to see. Um, so. Tra the traditional $20,000 in a petitioned article for Howard Sport and Chase Libraries can count towards the municipal appropriation requirement, but the problem is there's no guarantee that town meeting will approve it, or if they do approve it, I mean, they, or they may reduce the amount. So that's just something we're going to have to make sure that everyone's aware of so they know the impact of um, those decisions. Mm -hmm. so that's okay. my report. All right, thank you, Jenny. And before we go on to Emily, I want to um, thank Megan for being here with us for that report. But if you, if you want to just turn off your camera and go I was going away, to say that um, I have some a child who needs some homework assistance, so it's probably a good idea. Okay, <laughs> but thank well, you. Well, thank good to actually you. see you all. Thanks for coming. <laughs> we rely on you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Joanne, Joanne, before you go ahead, just on the grab-and-go business. Yes. Um, just a comment that at uh, Pilgrim Church, we had a yard sale uh, maybe a month ago. And the biggest seller, he said, books flew out <laughs> because nobody can get into their libraries. So everybody was buying books. So they're going to have another yard sale this coming weekend and got a ton of books. So you're in, we're in competition now. So we're going to get the doors open, get well, people into the libraries. Not, to not totally in competition, Bill, because we're not taking any donations. And that's, um, so it'll be good to know that there's a church that is taking book donations. Uh, they, we're selling them. No, but you well, need to get them from to to sell, right? Yes. 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 There are a do lot wanna, of Do you want to give your address, Bill, so people can drop off at your house? <laughs> I just vented six bags of my mother's books uh, the other uh, on Sunday. So no, I don't need any more books. But okay. take them to the Pilgrim Church in Howardsport. Thanks. Okay. Then. Um, Emily. Emily also had a report. Does anyone have questions for Emily or comments? Okay, Emily, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, no, Jenny's right. We spent the majority of the past month getting ready for grab and go. Um, there was a lot of work that had to be done, daily walkthroughs through the building just to what, what have we forgotten, maybe signage that needed to be updated, that sort of thing. So that was pretty time consuming over the last month. There's not a lot else in my report other than the podcast, the back to school podcast and a few other things that we managed to fit in. Um, I think Jenny's right. I think the, we're now three days in to grab and go and we're still kind of getting our feet underneath us and seeing what this workflow is going to look like for circulation staff. 
Um, we've had a full-time staff member stationed at the door as a greeter, as Jenny mentioned, and then a, a staff member also functioning as like a floater on the floor to assist people. But everyone else is behind the plexiglass in the circulation area. And um, it's a very different workflow for circulation staff. We're accustomed to just jumping from one workstation to the other, going out into the stacks with a patron, joining them at that computer to assist them, and we're having to relearn how to do some of those things. So I think it's going to take some time for us to really develop um, a routine, I guess is how I would put it. But I think staff are on board and and we're talking things through constantly and that's really helpful you know at the end of a grab and go session we're just doing a quick debrief and saying what worked what didn't what could we improve next time and so as we can you know continue to get experience with this and dial some of those things in i think um we'll really come together as a team and and streamline the process a little bit um, I do have to, a huge shout out to Robin, our new custodian, who was so helpful in moving furniture and we've relocated some shelving units. If you haven't been in since um, we reopened for grab and go, I invite you to come in and take a look. I think the library looks fantastic right now, probably with the exception of my office, because I haven't been able to put any files away or do anything in there. So it's kind of become the dumping ground for all of the random things that we realized didn't have a home. Um, so you can avoid my office, but the rest of the library looks fantastic, and I invite you to come in and take a look. Um, patrons were really excited, as Jenny mentioned, just to be back in the building. Um, the building itself means a lot to the community, and they um, love coming in to see the artwork and um, in the staff as well, and to get books, mm -hmm. but the building ex itself is, is really meaningful to the community. So it was nice to be able to welcome them back in. Um, but a huge thanks to our custodian, Robin, who, who really helped us quite a bit. Um, Jenny mentioned one of the sticky spots at this point is going to be the public computers, but we'll work on that. I think she's right. Having that six foot um, spacing around the computer will make it a little bit easy to set and maintain boundaries with patrons who maybe want some more one on one assistance that we can't really provide right now. Um, and we'll see how that goes over the next few weeks. One interesting thing that I want to point out is in addition to the 85 to 100 people that have come in during each grab and go session, at least one library staff member from a, a neighboring library has come in to see how we're doing things. Um, <laughs> That's, and, and I'll admit, and I admitted to them, I did the same thing. I visited several open libraries. Um, I went to Osterville, I went to South Yarmouth, and just to, to see how they had set up the library and what they were doing. Um, so it's been nice to have that professional interaction with other librarians who are maybe a few steps behind us in the process, but have come in yeah. to get some oh, advice. Yeah. yeah. Yep, so that's it. Okay. Then uh, the next one is building and grounds. Um, I, I don't really have anything to say because Jenny pretty much said everything other than it really does look amazing. And if you haven't been inside the library, go inside, look and see. Um, Sean and the DPW did an amazing job with the retrofitting and, and uh, enabling it so that it keeps the staff and the patrons as safe as possible. I was in too, and I can't believe how welcoming they've, they've made the, the plexiglass look with the, stick, the, the leaf stickers and the writing on the, the plexiglass. It's delightful. We have some talented staff members. Can I just say one more thing? Um, yesterday when I went in there, there was a woman coming out that had been there for grab and go. And she was commenting on how wonderful it was to be back in the library that for a few minutes, she actually felt normal again. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, isn't that wonderful? I have not been inside yet, but I've been moving by. Uh, recently, and I commented to my wife uh, that um, this building, the library, has never looked better than yes. it does right now. It looks wonderful. And the renovations and so forth, and 
and the landscaping, it's never looked better. It's fabulous. It's wonderful. Jeannie and I had talked last year about, and it was too late to get uh, wreaths for each window on the on Main Street. But if if that, I, I think that would be wonderful. We yes. we to do that one year, uh, but it turned out that all the lights weren't working at the same time. So it right. looked beautiful, and maybe we'll even get a little bit of snow. So, Don't get crazy. <laughs> I, I just want to second what Bill said about the building never looking so nice. It's like when you're when you're trying to sell your house and you get it all cleaned out and decluttered for an open house, and um, so we just need to keep it that way because the issue is is space, you know. And and right now it looks so nice and clean because we moved things off of the floor. They're stored in what would otherwise be a public space. So so we have months to work on that before we have full access. But I don't know if you can see this. I want to show you my new office. Um, Bill, can you see that? That is the 1858 map of uh, Barnstable County, and um, it was hanging in a in a back room in, with tech services, you know, with file cabinets in front of it and book carts, and people stop in to see it. So now it's hanging on my wall, and you can see it coming down through reference. So it looks very impressive, and I'm sure. You know, once once we're back to normal and patrons are in on the second floor, they'll see it, and and that's fine. They can they they should stop in and see it. There's, I think only maybe ten or fifteen. Do you know Kathleen? Of the of the maps around, it, it's very rare. Well, and the, it goes with the carpet. It, it's, it, it was gold, and I knew the walls were yellow. I knew it would go, but I didn't really realize till they brought it in here to put it. The shading on the map is teal, just like the carpet. I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> it was meant to be. Meant to be. Okay. Uh, I don't believe Steve is, Stephen Ford is here. So we won't be having a, a report from this lesson. Um, correspondence. If you saw in the, the, the letter in the packet, Kathleen had uh, mentioned that the staff needed to know that we were very supportive of all and grateful for everything that they'd been doing. And there was there were a couple emails going back and forth. And Kathleen and I put together this letter, and then we had one for each of the staff members. It was and it's promising to do something nice later when we can. Hey, it Joan? was delightful. It was the nicest letter letting people know that we really do appreciate all they're doing. I would I would I really liked it. Good. Thank you. It was very much appreciated too. Oh, we, good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathleen. And, well, and thank you to Jenny. Thank you to Jenny for singling me out to be the only trustee that got a blanket. No. Oh, everybody got a blanket. It wasn't everybody. just me. Wasn't just you. No. Well, thank you very much. Yes, that was, you were the only one that got a personal note that. from Bill because I did get I did get a personal uh, note because I couldn't get into your office. I was impressed. <laughs> they were like, no, no, put it uh, on, put on the table. Just leave it on the table. Nobody's been in that office for six months except for the very three. Good. I, 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 I read I read now the Cape Cod Times online through the clams. On my computer in the morning, and it's getting chillier, so I've been using my Brooks Library blanket to keep myself warm while I'm doing it. <laughs> and Jenny said, well, I say, I, the staff I know really appreciate. I, I mean, I always appreciate the trustees. One of the benefits of the pandemic is having these meetings recorded, and um, so many uh, other staff members have watched the meetings and you know, we're very impressed and appreciative of all of your concern for the staff and their safety. And I think that even though, you know, Emily and I meet with them and we discuss, uh, you know, different plans to get, you know, we develop our plans together, but I think it was reassuring to know that we weren't being pressured, that, you know, they had more confidence in what we were recommending and discussing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, old business. We don't have any old business that I know of. Okay. Yay. Uh, new business. Uh, the library director's recommendation to go find free. 
Um, I believe everybody had a, a chance to read this report. And does anyone have anything they want to add to it? Okay, I can hear shaking heads. Can I just say for the public, um, people that may be watching, the full report is on our website. It's on the town website. And so, you know, there's a four page summary of studies and the history and everything. So people don't think that, you know, you're just cavalierly mm -mm. going away with revenue. Um, the truth is it is costing us more than, um, than we're collecting. And the town is no longer forecasting any um, revenue from library fines and making their budget uh, sources of revenue projections. Jenny, do you think that we need a vote on this? Yes. Okay, then let's go. Let's, can I have a motion to go fine free? I'd like to make a motion to go fine free. Second? Second. Okay, thank you, Jeannie. Uh, the roll call vote. Linda? Yes. Bill? Yes. Joan? Make yes. a motion. Kathleen? Yes. Bernadette? Yes. Jeannie Wheeler seconded the motion, and I vote yes also. So it's unanimous. Okay, second. Right. So uh, just also for the public, just to say this doesn't, well, we are currently waiving fines and we will throughout the pandemic. This just makes this change permanent. Um, but it takes some time for clams. We'll have to get in the queue um, for them to do the systems work that's needed for that. And, and also for the public, this does not replace, uh, there will still be replacement uh, fees for any lost or damaged materials. This is just for overdue items. Will we still get um, notices saying that our books are due? Yes. That seems appropriate. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and then- a nice reminder, yeah. The next order of business is the donation of the Milton Welt painting of the exchange building from the Cahoon family. Um, Ginny, where will, do, we, do you have any idea where this might be able to go? Or is that a concern? Not a concern. We have lots of blank, blank walls now that we've moved so many things and, you know, things got taken down while DPW was doing their work. Um, mm -hmm. I think Emily's probably got a good spot for it. <laughs> with them. But the, the family has previously donated two other Milton Welts, one of, um, I think one of Brooks Academy and one of the library. And um, so this would be the third. And um, I, I believe in the email to Jeannie, one of the daughters said that the Oscar Cahoon, their father, had had a Milton Welt um, commissioned, and it might be this. They weren't sure if it was this one or not, but if it is this one, then um, there are no prints, so that probably makes it more valuable, I assume. Mm. Okay. Well, can I have a motion to accept the donation of the Milton Welt? Painting. Before we do that, I didn't catch that last remark about is it a an original or a print? Original. It's an original, but it and it may be one that Mr. Cahoon had commissioned. So there were never any prints made of it. Uh, you know, so it's not only an original painting. There are no copies. It's 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 a picture of the Exchange Building, but it's from the Bates Hardware side not the first church side like they normally are. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see it. Looks I'm really so excited good. about it. <laughs> okay, then can I have a motion to accept the donation of the Milton Welt painting of the exchange building from the Cahoon family? So moved. Linda I'm made the motion first. Okay. No, I didn't make a motion. I was trying to ask a question. Oh, all right. Jeannie made the motion. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, just a quick question. What's the date of this? And in terms of insurance, do you, what is the process? Do you then tell the town that there you've got an additional painting to insure and it has X value so they can add it to the inventory? I think the value on all the artwork is um, 
I, I don't know how that's determined. The town has a schedule and they insure the at throughout the town and they would add that to okay. it. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. It's okay. I don't have the date on it, Linda. Do you, Jeannie? No. And and Anne hasn't come up yet to get it out of the condo. So she should be coming soon though, sometime this month. I was just curious, uh, because I live in Milton Welts house where he lived here for years. Yes. So uh, I was just curious. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, how lucky. My mother <laughs> also lived in that house. She uh, did. In the summers. And Eileen Cahoon is the library trustee that I replaced in 1980. That's right. 1908? 1908. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Joanne, for that. <laughs> so this marks your 40th anniversary. Bill, this, this year is your 40th anniversary on the board? I believe so. Oh, my gosh. That's simple, man. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Uh, I'm going to take the roll call. Linda? Yes. Uh, Bill? Yes. Joan? Yes. Kathleen? Yes. Bernadette? Yes. Jeannie? Yes. And, and I also vote yes. Joanne Brown. Unanimous. Do we have any um, money, monetary donations this month? Oh, well, okay. That's a disappointment. Um, then uh, the next item is the 2022 to 28 capital plan submission. Uh, Ginny, can we discuss that again? This was the, it's the um, updating the library. The interior reconfiguration, right. yes. We've had it uh, on the capital plan since 2016. So we haven't received the instructions yet, you know, since town meeting just passed. Um, but from what I've heard discussed, I, I, I suspect we may get, we may need to submit that in the next few weeks before the next board meeting. So that's why I'm bringing it up to you. Um, the current plan has $40,000 for an assessment and plans in fiscal 22 and 150,000 in fiscal 24 to do the work. Um, mm -hmm. As you probably know, the town is looking at pushing back all of the projects and, you know, with all the financial impact of the pandemic and the lost revenue. Um, the recent retrofitting work done by DPW, which was paid for from the CARES Act funds, went a long way to meeting our biggest priorities. Um, I, I, I'm recommending that we remove this project, that you vote to remove this project from the capital plan. Um, I think we need the time post pandemic to see um, how far this goes towards meeting our needs and to see how, um, I think no one really knows what post pandemic use of public facilities is going to be. And um, I think we need that time to see what the community needs are and also to see, you know, if, if this met most of our needs, you know, it, it's more, um, I just think we need the time to see. I don't think we can defend um, it. I, and I'm also thinking if you don't vote to do this, it's, it's going to get pushed back anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, Linda. Uh, I think that we should push it back, but I don't think we should ask to have it removed from the capital plan because then we'll start over again and it'll be 2030 before it's looked at. So if anything, I think this board should say we'd like to move it in the queue to 20, whatever, 23. Mm -hmm not just completely remove it because then we're going to be completely out of luck. I agree. So, but it, we, don't, we don't want to do anything with the roofing article though, do we? No, that's a DPW article now. That's not under us. Okay. okay. Um, I, I would like to suggest then like even fiscal 24, I think 23 is next year at this time we'd be making the recommendation and I, we will, hopefully be back in normal operations, but maybe only 
for four months or six months, you know, not, not very long. Well, I'm fine with, I'm fine with to 2024. I think my only point was not to remove it from the capital plan, but have this board say we'd like to move it in its, move it out a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Could I suggest that we move, if it's on the plan for 22, to make it 24, if it's on the plan for 23, to make it 24, because it was going to be a two-year project anyway. It's on for 22 for the plan, so if we move that to 24 and move the the project itself back to from 24 to 26. That sounds 26 or 25. We had two years, you know how slow it is to... Yeah. Get okay. the assessment and then, yeah. Okay. I agree with Linda. I was going to make the same point. Mm -hmm. Don't get off the list. Right. But can I have a motion to? Motion. Sure. Motion to uh, approve requesting that the interior redesign projects be moved by two years on okay. the capital plan. Second. 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 Okay. Um, I'm gonna. I'll do a roll call vote. Linda made the motion. Yes. Bill. Yes. Joan. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Bernadette. Yes. Jeannie. Yes. And I, Joanne, vote yes also. So that's unanimous. Okay. Thank you. I didn't want to make that decision myself. Um, I'm a, and I'm concerned there's a tighter time frame this year, so it might be before you meet. Oh, yes. That sounds pretty um, likely. Okay, trustee reports and requests for next meeting's agenda. I'm going to poll the trustees and see if you have any reports, or comments, feedback, anything you want to say uh, or add to the next agenda or receive a report on in the next meeting. Bernadette? Uh, no, nothing at this time. Okay. Bill? Do you have anything you want to bring up next meeting? I do not. Okay. Jeannie? No. Okay. Joan? No. Kathleen? No. Okay. Linda? No. All right. Well, that's cutting the meeting really short here. The upcoming meetings and events. Um, our next meeting is November 4th at 7 o'clock. And the, our report to the, okay. Our report to the annual report to the selectmen of, is to be determined. I haven't heard them even discuss having annual reports this year, so it may not be happening. Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Yeah. Oh, Joan wanted to second. Yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, roll call vote. Linda. Do you? Do yes. You, yes. Bill? Yes. Joan? Yes. yes. Kathleen? Yes. Bernadette? Yes. And Jeannie Wheeler? Yes. And I want to go home too. The meeting is adjourned at 810. Nice job. Okay. See you next time. Go Bye. see Jenny's oh, office. Oh, it has been horrible. It oh. sounds like the whole backyard is out up from one side to the other. The wind has been howling in my house. Howling. Yes. Is. Yes, it I is. I kept on thinking I was gonna lose a power. Glad I didn't. Goodbye, all. Good to see you. Stay Good healthy.